Hello Internet! Last time when we were working on Observer, we were building this. Uh, so we have a name. So I can type a name of some object in our scene, and then we get the location of that, uh, the position of that, and then I can modify that. So I've typed in directional light, and if, as I change it, our directional light in the scene actually changes, which is cool, I guess. It's not super useful because I can just click the directional light and start modifying it. So I want to make this actually useful. And so what we're going to do is make this a little bit more intense. Uh, so the idea here is instead of getting one object, we're going to get all the objects. Uh, and so this find is no longer going to find something with a specific name. It's going to find something with a, a regular expression name. Uh, I don't know if regular expressions are the best way to do this, but I just want to do it with regular expressions because why not? Uh, so by doing it with regular expressions, we should be able to actually find anything. Actually, let's start with contains. If it contains anything inside of this or inside of our name, then we're good. Uh, then we can add reg regular expressions later. That's probably a better decision. So this isn't going to work. Uh, found object isn't, isn't a thing because this will only return one object and most of the other game object find things are either going to find things by tags or by type. Uh, so the way to do this is to do resources dot find all objects of type. I've never actually used this, but according to what I looked up, this works. So we're going to we're going to try it and hopefully prove that it actually does do what I think it does. Uh, so find all objects of type all. Uh, so this should return every object that is a game object. Uh, do I want to do all? I don't think I do. Uh, all, if I did all, it would literally go through the entire game. Is that correct? Hold on. <laughs> I've definitely done my research for this. By that I mean I've made things up until it sort of thought it would work. That's totally helpful. We're going to do this anyway and then we'll make it up from there. So uh, <laughs> this is going to return all the inactive and active objects in our scene. Uh, I kind of want it to do both. We could probably add a feature that will allow you to disable or enable only inactive or active objects. I don't really care. So. This is going to work for us, uh, which means this needs to go away, which means that's all broke, but that's cool. Uh, so first things first, this is no longer going to work. We want this to be if observed name is not null or empty. So string dot is null or empty observed name. And then we need to not that. So if it's not null or empty, then we're actually going to go and search everything. I don't really want to pull every object, uh, every frame. This won't actually do it every frame. This will only do it when the UI would update. But it's still going to be just not something that I really want to do. And it's not particularly helpful to return literally everything. So here's our list of game objects. Uh, we'll just stick this in a var called game objects. And so these will return empty arrays if nothing is there, which is great because it means we can stick them into a for each loop. So we'll call our game object gobj, <laughs> just because why not? And then game objects, for all game objects, let's just write them out. So we're going to do the same features, but instead of doing it for one, now we're doing it for any object that contains this. So this isn't quite going to work, but I'm just kind of writing it here because I want to. <laughs> and so game object dot name. So we're swapping out the label. So instead of labeling it uh, location, we're actually labeling it by the name of the object. And hopefully that kind of helps us distinguish what we're actually talking about instead of just getting a bunch of vectors and then kind of guessing until we get the right one. So if I do this, uh -huh. as long as I type something here, what's going to happen is we're going to get all the game objects and then we're going to write them all to the editor. So theoretically, I just created a inspector 
that is going to return all of the things. <laughs> oh, it literally returned all the things. Uh, <laughs> literally all the things. So we're getting uh, <laughs> values for things that don't exist in our scene. I don't really want that there. So let's go here and add a quick check dot where uh, we're going to need link for this because why not where our game object dot active uh, active self yeah so I only want the objects that are active themselves uh, because I think that should get rid of most of these hopefully not all of them that's confusing but okay huh I don't actually know where those are coming from I'm some of them seem to be prefabs from just unity but I don't really want to render anything that's not in the scene I really don't care about them I not that they're not important I just I just don't care about them uh, if the scene is part of the See where is it? There's a Unity editor scene. Scene manager, that's right. Right? It's called the scene manager. There we go. Dot get active scene. Yeah. That. Or is there an active? Is loaded that might work too let's actually do that one Be so part of the thing is unity made it possible so you can actually have multiple scenes loaded so that may not actually be the best way to do this is loaded makes a little bit more sense hopefully that will reduce all of this clutter I'm trying to get it down so I only see the objects that we actually have in the inspector that's my goal like that uh, so now we have a directional light I can change that and a main camera and I can change that as well cool so now I have these things that I can kind of modify as I want and they just go. Uh, our search isn't working though. So if I type like light, we don't get anything. Kind of want that. So let's do, we have our name. Let's call that search instead because that's what it's doing. And all we need now is another where. So first we're going to go through everything and filter out all the things that aren't loaded. And then we're going to filter out and only grab the things where the name uh, contains our observed name. There we go. So we're getting a little bit crazy with link here. So let's kind of add some new lines to do all of that fun stuff. And now we're done. <laughs> so theoretically, what's going to happen is we're going to filter out everything that isn't loaded get it down to those two objects because that's all we have right now. And then if the name contains what we're, our search term, we're going to return that and then iterate over those and actually use them to print out, which means if I have like a complex scene with a ton of lights, I should be able to type like light and get all the lights, right? So type light, we get directional light and I should be able to do directional light too. And there we go. Uh, they won't, update automatically until you select the editor window which is a little bit annoying but it does update as soon as you do which is good enough for this <laughs> so that's sort of where i wanted to get with this uh, we should be able to change this in real time so as i start typing we should be able to like you see i add a space here the first directional light pops off because there's no space at the end of it and as i type like one it just updates in real time. So now we're kind of searching through all of these things. I should enter a name. Let's do this one. Let's move it a little bit over that way. And let's move this other one on the Z axis. There we go. We've got a three lights. <laughs> so not really, this isn't exactly what I'm kind of going for. There's a little bit more to it, but we're getting in the right direction. This is making it a little bit easier to kind of manage these things. And this way I can kind of just select all my lights and do something with them. So I don't know. I thought this would be helpful. Uh, we'll probably pick this up and do some more stuff with it, 
because I, I want to take it a little bit, well, a lot further actually, because all this does is give us a way to edit the position. What about rotation or scale or components or names or whatever? So if we want to edit any of that, we're going to need to actually go even further than this. But this should be enough for now. So I'll leave it here. Uh, if you guys have suggestions on how we could improve this, or if you don't like the style these videos are going, which is very short and uh, more directed, we, we kind of focus on one particular thing, kind of solve one hurdle and not move a little bit slower. Uh, let me know what you think. But yeah, that's it for this video. So till next time, see you, internet.